Welcome to part four of the GPS assessment. You're in the home stretch. In this last part, we'll provide some tools to help you look at your story and give some direction for putting your GPS, your gifts, passions, and story together so you can take your next step in the direction God has uniquely designed for you as you fulfill your masterpiece mission. Now, as you begin to think about your own story, it's important to recognize this. Your story isn't just a list of facts and events. It's a weaving of those facts and events into a narrative that has meaning, one that connects with God's larger story. When you listen to the details of your life with your ear attuned to the spirit, meaning emerges. In the book, Find Your Place, the author says it this way, a life story doesn't just say, here's what happened. It also says, here's what matters. Your story illuminates who you are, what the events of your life mean, and who you are becoming, and at all points toward what will happen next. So how do we leverage our story for a better understanding of our purpose? We believe that the best way to move ahead in discerning your calling is to look behind into your story. We have to look backward in order to move forward. First, as we look back, it's important to look at both your brokenness and blessedness. It's as we look to Jesus through our blessings and our brokenness that our eyes are open to see him. Now I realize that sometimes looking back at our story can be difficult. So here's a reflection that may help. This is a simple way to think about the events and experiences that have shaped us along the way. There's also a PDF version of this reflection available under the resources heading. Imagine yourself walking down a long hallway. On the walls are paintings that reflect those life-shaping moments in your life. On one side are portraits of experiences that brought you excitement, achievement, and fulfillment. On the other side hang pictures of experiences that caused pain, frustration, and remorse. Walking slowly down the hallway, looking carefully at each painting, is an important step toward understanding who God created you to be and discovering your kingdom purpose he has set aside just for you. I want to encourage you to set aside some time after completing this video to remember and jot down those key experiences that come to mind. Invite God to help you notice what's most important. Invite him to be with you in the celebrations, the challenges, and the hurt. And once you've identified those key experiences, take some time to focus on the blessings. Here are some questions to use as a guide. As you imagine walking the hallway with Jesus by your side, reflect on each stage of life from childhood until now. What moments and seasons of blessing do you notice? What meaning does it have for you now? Take some time to notice what comes to mind and the feelings attached to those memories. These are important pieces of your story. Consider the threads of God's blessing, where he has been uniquely present, how he has led you at various points of your life, those moments of closeness. After spending some time with those memories, then consider the brokenness, those places of hurt, the disappointment, the discouragement, and unmet expectations. Again, imagine walking the hallway with Jesus by your side. Reflect on each of the stages of life from childhood until now. As much as we value our strengths, it's often in our brokenness that we discover the ways that Jesus will use us most profoundly. How has Jesus met me in my challenges and pain? How might Jesus use my pain for his purpose? How might he use my brokenness to help someone else? You may want to jot down your memories, the thoughts and insights as you recall these experiences. Allow God's grace to meet you in the blessings and the brokenness. Invite his healing presence to those places that still hurt. And then consider these questions. What themes are repeated most often? Which memories spark the most emotion? How can your story continue to be written in your church? How can your story continue to be written in your community? Take some time to talk to God about your answers, as well as your continuing questions about your own story. Henry Nouwen writes this about our stories. He says, we have to trust that our stories deserve to be told. We may discover that the better we tell our stories, the better we will want to live them. 
There is so much truth in that one statement. And just like our gifts and passions are given to us for the purpose of serving others, so is our story. God has a bigger story that he is working out in and through all of us. The impact you and I will have on this planet at this time in history is more than the sum of our individual contributions. Listen to this statement. Like a master artist, Jesus is taking our callings and crafting them together to paint a powerful and compelling redemption story for the world to see and respond to. Because of this, it is incredibly important for us to play our part, regardless of how insignificant it may seem to us. What an amazing statement. It's so important for each one of us to play our part, no matter how big or small we may think it is. As we discover and utilize our gifts, passions, and story, our common destination is the reason God has gifted us and drawn us together in the body of Christ. And that is for the purpose of making disciples. I'm going to draw your attention to a familiar portion of scripture. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always even to the end of the age. You see, disciples are learners or apprentices who live in full surrender to Jesus as their master and teacher. When people become disciples of Jesus, they are transformed in their character and calling. As they grow in character and calling, their impact increases. They are mobilized to make a difference in every sector of society and every nook and cranny of the world. You see, it's through disciple making Jesus creates the change in us that needs to be manifested in the world. Without personal transformation and the multiplication of disciples, world transformation cannot be achieved or sustained. And with this challenging mission comes a promise from Jesus as he returned to the Father. He said this, And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As we understand our gifts, passions, and story, and use them together with others in the body of Christ, our common goal is to be disciples who make disciples. What a privilege it is to participate in the bigger story of God and see his work accomplished. So now what? I hope you have found this information and insight helpful as you better understand your unique design and how it indicates your one-of-a-kind masterpiece mission. As we come to the end of this series, it's time for you to take a next step. And here's how you can do that. First of all, pray for discernment as you understand your design and calling. God delights in answering those kinds of prayers. Your next steps are these. Take the assessment. If you haven't already, it's free. You can take it as many times as you would like and you can go back and view or edit your assessment anytime. After taking the assessment, talk with a friend about your results. Ask for their response to what you learned and ask them to pray with you about next steps. Fill out the GPS form to let us know your unique design. And make an appointment to talk with a staff member about your results and help you take next steps. Thanks for participating in the GPS assessment. If you have any questions or would like to talk about your results, you can email me at lindaw at churchon75.com. I'd love to talk with you. May you experience God's love and great delight as you discover and live out your masterpiece mission.